Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a woven pattern swatch in Illustrator. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a pattern like the one I have here, which is a sort of woven pattern where it looks like the elements are going under and over each other. And you're going to learn to create the pattern not only as a vertical pattern like this, but also how to create it as a rotated pattern. And that's really easy. Once you've created the pattern, it rotates very simply. So that's what we're setting out to achieve. I'm starting with a brand new document. And mine's 1,000 points by 1,000 points, but yours can be any size that you like. I'm going to turn off the stroke, and I'm going to select a fill color. And I'm going to use this color here for the actual weave, and the color next to it for the highlighting or the shadow. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to click in my document because I want to create a fixed size rectangle. And I suggest that you keep to these sorts of proportions. So I'm choosing a height of 50 points and a width of 425 points. So I'm going to click OK. And now I want to move and copy this. So with it still selected, I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Move. And I want to move this in a vertical direction. I want to move it 200 points, which is four times what the width of the shape was. And I'm going to move it 90 degrees. Well, that's the vertical direction. I'm just going to click Copy. And this gives me two resulting shapes. And the spacing for them is exactly what I need it to be. Now I'm going to reselect both shapes this time and choose Object Transform. And this time I'm going to rotate them. So I'll click Rotate. And I want to rotate them through 90 degrees. So this is exactly what I want. I just want to click Copy so that they're copied into the position. And there is the basis of my pattern. The next thing I need to do is to create the shading. And to do that, I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to click in my document because I want my line to be a certain length. I want it to not be on an angle at all, so I'm going to set that to 0. And I want it to be 25 points in length. In other words, it is half the width of these rectangles. So I'm just going to click OK. Now I'm going to select this time on the stroke color. And this time I'm going to select my darker color. So this is the stroke for my line. And I'm going to set its stroke width to 10 points. That is 1 -fifth of the width of my line. Now if I just click away and zoom in, You'll see that the line is just a box line. Well, if I select it and apply a brush profile to it, I can make it pointed. So I'm going to choose this width profile, and it makes it into a little triangle. So I'm going to reselect my line, and now I'm going to duplicate it four times. The easiest way to do this is to choose Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. And I want to turn Preview on, and I want four of these to make five in total. And then I want to move it in a vertical direction. So I'm just going to start clicking in here. And I want to move it 10 points. Now, it doesn't matter if I move it minus 10 points or plus 10 points. It's exactly the same result. So once I've got what I want, I'll click OK. And now I'm going to expand this with Object Expand Appearance. And then I'm going to group it with Object Group, because I want it to travel as a group. Now let's press Control-0 to zoom back out to see the whole of our document. I'm just going to come in here and place this shading in position. So this is going to be one of the areas where this line goes underneath this one. So I'm going to reselect my shape and choose Object Transform. And this time, I want to reflect it. And I want to reflect it in a vertical direction, but I want a copy. So I'm going to click Copy. And now I can just move this over and line it up in position over here. And I've got my guides on, and so it's snapping into position. Let's just zoom in a little bit to make sure that that snap is working correctly. 
because it's a group I can just grab one of the triangles and they'll move together. So now let's select both of these and I want to make a copy of them. So I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. And now I'm going to just drag on the copied shapes and move them into position. So now I've got two out of my four shadings done. I'm going to reselect both of these and I'm going to choose Edit Copy again and Edit Paste in Place. Now this time I want to rotate them so with them still selected I'll choose Object Transform Rotate. And I'm setting this to 90 degrees and I'm just going to click OK. I don't want to make a copy at this stage. I just want to rotate the selected version. And now I'm going to drag it up here line it up and place it in position. Now I want to make a copy, edit copy, edit paste in place and now just move this one down to here. So there's the basis of my weave pattern. You can see that this line's going over here and it looks like it's going under here. This is going over here, under here. This one's going over here, under here and this one's over and under. So once you've got this basic shape, you're ready to go ahead and create your pattern. I'm using the selection tool. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and I'm going to choose Object, Pattern, Make. Click OK and we're being told that a pattern piece has been added to the swatches. Now you want to watch this right now because the chances are that you're going to see something that's a little bit misleading. It can look as if this shape has already been created for you and that the pattern's perfect. In fact, it's not correct. I'm going to set my width to 400 and my height to 400 and that is the correct pattern. The pattern dimensions, if you set up the shapes that I suggested with those sizes, then the pattern size is going to be 400 by 400 and then we'll just click Done. The pattern's now created so we don't technically need this swatch any longer. I'm going to keep it just in case I want to use it. For example, I may want to make the vertical pieces a different colour and the horizontal pieces a different colour and I would need those pieces and it's just a whole lot easier to reuse what I've already created but I'm going to tuck it to one side because I don't want it for these purposes. I'm now going to create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. I could do that with the rectangle tool, but I have a script that does that for me. If you're interested in learning about scripting in Illustrator, have a look for my video on Illustrator scripts. And this is just a script I downloaded from the web and I'm using. So I've selected my path that I've just created and now I'm going to fill it. Make sure that the fill is selected here and fill it with my new pattern. Now this is very large, so let's scale it. I'm going to choose Object Transform Scale. Now I don't want to scale my object, so I'm going to deselect Object and I just want to transform my pattern and I want to transform it to quite a much smaller size. So I'm just holding Shift as I'm arrowing down here to reduce the size of my pattern. And let's take it to 40% and click OK. So there is my pattern at 40%. Now if you want to, you can also make it rotated and that will allow you to create a different and slightly more interesting effect perhaps from this pattern. So again with my rectangle selected, this time let's choose Object Transform Rotate. And this time we want to rotate our pattern 45 degrees and we don't want to transform the object, we just want to transform the pattern. So when I press the Tab key, you'll see that the pattern has now been rotated. So it's got the look of a woven fence perhaps or a woven basket and I'll just click OK. Now if you're at all concerned about the look of the pattern, you can just go in here, zoom in and just check to make sure it's looking okay. Wherever you see that there's something that's a little bit rough, the chances are that that's just your monitor and not the pattern itself. So zoom right in to make sure that what you're seeing is a real problem with the pattern. So I'm saying something out of alignment here. Well, it doesn't exist. It's not out of alignment. It's just the way the monitor is rendering the pattern. The pattern itself is just fine. So there's how to create an interesting woven style pattern in Illustrator. 
I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.